All right. So in the last few minutes, what I want to do is talk about MRMP assembly uh, in the different stages and, and how dynamic it is. And this is important because I think that what I've tried to convince you of in the last few minutes is that the proteins associated with mRNAs are really important in dictating how well it's translated, degraded, and where it's localized within the cell. And so we need to think then about uh, what is the process by which these proteins are assembled on mRNAs and, and how does it change. And there are a few uh, general principles I want to uh, highlight here. First is that mRNP assembly begins in the nucleus. So I began the talk by mentioning this fact, but that many RNA binding proteins are imported into the nucleus, assemble with the nascent transcript, and then are exported with the RNA out into the cytoplasm. And in fact, as we study more and more proteins that bind to mRNA, this is becoming uh, uh, more of a common theme where many, many factors are loading on the message in the nucleus, uh, probably as the, uh, as the RNA is being produced co-transcriptionally. Once the mRNA is exported to the cytoplasm, simply being in a different subcellular compartment can promote some transitions in the RNA uh, protein complexes. For example, in the nucleus, when uh, there's a certain complex that binds to the 5 prime end called the nuclear cap binding complex. And once the mRNA reaches the cytoplasm, the presence of RAN GDP, which is a, a protein GDP complex, which is at high levels in the cytoplasm, whereas in the nucleus you tend to have a related RAN GTP complex, the presence of that RAN GDP causes loss of that nuclear cap binding complex and loading this cytoplasmic cap binding complex we talked about, the EIF4E and 4G, which promotes translation onto the messages. And that simply occurs because the mRNA is now in a compartment with a different concentration of RAN GDP. Similarly, localization to specific subcellular regions can affect the exchange of proteins. For example, uh, the beta, mRNA, beta actin mRNA I mentioned in the beginning, which is targeted to the uh, uh, leading edge of a crawling fibroblast, when it, when it reaches out there, a protein which targets it there, called the zip code binding protein, uh, is phosphorylated by the SARC kinase, which is localized to that part of the cell, and is caused to be released from the mRNA. So simply being, because different compartments in the cell have different biochemical properties, that can change the proteins which are associated with the message at different places within the cell. Another way that proteins are exchanged is through the process of translation. When the message comes out of the nucleus, uh, presumably there are many proteins which are bound to the coding region, and one example of that would be this exon junction complex, which is deposited at splice junctions, which are predominantly found within the coding region. When ribosomes reach an uh, exon junction complex, they dissociate it through direct uh, interactions, and they cause that to be bumped off the message. And so the, the entry of mRNAs in translation and the movement of ribosomes down the message cause the loss of essentially the proteins which are bound to the coding region um, uh, from the mRNA complex. Whereas mRNAs which are bound to the 3' prime UTR, uh, we anticipate remain bound relatively stably, although there's no direct measurements for what the dynamics of those proteins are uh, within cells. Finally, mRNAs can be dynamic in ways uh, that we really uh, don't understand yet, but involve large-scale rearrangements in the set of proteins associated with this. One thing I'll talk about in my second lecture is that during times of stress, mRNAs can exit translation and assemble a different complex of proteins involving the translation repression complex and decapping factors we talked about. Okay? And when they do that, they actually lose all these translation factors which are currently on the message. These mRNAs that are repressed can then re-enter translation at later times, uh, then losing all these factors and reassembling a new translation complex. So there can be large-scale rearrangements of the mRNAs associated with proteins. The mechanisms by which these occur and their frequency uh, really are not well understood at all yet, but we know that, that they can occur. Finally, the proteins associated with mRNAs are dynamic in that they're modulated by, their, by modifications. For example, in this one I want to give here, uh, a protein called BRF1, which binds the 3' prime end of mammalian messages and promotes their degradation uh, by the deadenylase, uh, can be phosphorylated in response to various uh, signal transduction pathways. And once phosphorylated, that recruits a uh, protein which binds to that phosphoprotein complex, blocking the ability of BRF1 
to recruit the deodenolase. Now, so not only are the proteins dynamic then, they can be modulated by modification, and the list of modification of RNA binding proteins is grown extremely long and continues to grow. We now know of many proteins that are methylated, acetylated, ubiquinated, can be uh, O-GLIC-NAC modified, they can be ADP ribosylated, sumylated, and the example I already gave you, phosphorylated. So what this means then is that uh, even for mRNA binding proteins which remain stably bound to the message, their function can be modified dramatically in response to various uh, signal transduction pathways or environmental cues simply by changing their modification status. Finally, the mRNA itself is modified. As we talked about during the process of degradation, mRNAs which are born have long polytails and then lose them. This is really a modification of the RNA sequence, but then also affects the RNP composition because it removes binding sites for the poly-A binding protein. Other modifications can happen to this RNA. Poly-A tails can be added back, which provides new binding sites for poly-A binding protein and therefore can nucleate the assembly of new translation complexes. In the last two years, we've also learned that mRNAs can undergo a process called urodenylation, where poly-U-tails are added to the three prime end of the message. And this can recruit uh, at least some components of the RNA degradation pathway. But what the, because this is a relatively new discovery, what the roles of polyurodenylation are and the diversity of factors that bind to those really remain to be discovered. Finally, we have to anticipate there are other modifications to RNAs, uh, perhaps methylation of nucleotides uh, that uh, just have yet to be discovered. But by changing the covalent structure of the RNA itself, that can also influence the proteins that are bound and its interaction with these various machines regulating translation, degradation, and localization. <laughs>